Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. Thank you for joining me today for Season 3, Week Number 4 in the Pokemon Premier League. This week, the Victorian Shadows will be taking on Iron Boffin and the Rochester Rhydons. Now, we are coming off of a victory last week. <laughs> nice. But this is the beauty of Draft League, is facing new opponents. And here, we have never fought the Iron Boffin, but that will not stop us from bringing the full brunt of the shadows to face him. <laughs> First, let us review his team. The Iron Boffin team is Roaring Moon, Goldango, Azumarill, Torkoal, Vaporeon, Cresselia, Venusaur, who can Terra into a Fire or a Fairy type, and Rhydon, who can actually Terra? No wait, Rhydon can't Terra, but the Galvantula can, and it can Terra into an Electric, Ice, or Ghost type, and then followed up with Ambipom and Tropius. That's right, he's trying to stamp out our shadows by using the sun. He's making the same tragic mistake that we made last season. The sun is a star, Darwin. Let's look directly at it. There are no words to express the pain that I feel right now. And that's okay, because sometimes when the sun is so blinding, when the light is just so bright... Uh, the sun's too hot. One star? Would not recommend to a nearby solar system. Rate me one star, I am one star. It uh, actually causes more shadows because it has to bend around more objects. So maybe he is actually an ally of the shadows. But for those of you who are uninitiated, the Victorian shadows now are getting rid of the Frenergy that we picked up from Onesie Bennett. No longer will we be using that as a crutch to win battles. I will put that away and I don't care if it takes me weeks to recover. We are not going to be using Frenergy. That is not what we're here to do. We're here to use the power of the shadows, the power of the darkness, real edge lord ours. Can I get an amen? So of course, really quickly, we're gonna do a team builder. Shout outs to Pokeaim for uh, letting me realize that what is the point of having a full team builder and then at the very end saying if you skip the team builder no you are here because you want the details on just what we brought this week so i'm going to give those to you and if you want to skip it that's fine but i'm not going to recap it right before the battle i don't know why i hit my desk in emphasis uh, there are <laughs> last week there was another weird thing where would my mic just went doink on our team. <laughs> so shout out to my editor, Stariata and Noxicultus. Thank you so much for the work that you are doing. I'm so happy to be here in the shadows with you. All right, so what is the team that the Victorian Shadows have this week? We have our Articuno. I went to the mountaintops to capture this Articuno. So this is a brand new addition to our team and it is coming off the bench for the first time versus the Iron Boffin. This week we have max speed and max special attack with a naive nature in order to utilize Ice Shard, Freeze Dry, Terra Blast, Fire, and Roost with heavy duty boots. The idea being with that max speed we can outspeed Golden Go and hit it with Terra Blast Fire. Ice uh, is a really good coverage against his entire team. And really the only things he can switch into that ice move are the Golden Go or Azumarill and Vaporeon, both of which get hit by Freeze Dry. Roos is just there for a longevity. After that, we have our dedicated lead, which is Darkrai with Focus Sash, Hypnosis, Dark Pulse, Calm Mind, and Ice Beam. Really good coverage against his whole team here. I did not have coverage against the Azumarill because I didn't think that Azumarill would want to risk the Sludge Bomb in that situation. Uh, and of course, again, something like the Vaporeon, we can hit that with Dark Pulses. We have just enough speed on this Dark Cry to outspeed a max speed Roaring Moon. After that, we have our Claude Sire. Claude Sire is max special defense once again. 
Sensing a theme when I bring Claude Sire here. Might have to switch that up just to keep people on their toes. You gotta keep them on their toes. No oh, toes! <laughs> Claude Sire has Stealth Rocks, Recover, Toxic, and Earthquake. We are using Water Absorb the ability this week because of the annoyance of his water types. Azumarill and Vaporeon can be very annoying and cover uh, just a lot of my team. And so Claude Sire is here to make sure that they don't get out of hand. Our Calodon has Assault Vest this week because it is here to take hits from the likes of his myriad special attackers, whether it be the Galvantula, the Vaporeon, the, the, the uh, Venusaur, or possibly the Torkoal and the Golden Go. Uh, I don't really want to take hits from Torkoal necessarily because I might get burned, but it also helps me out a little bit versus Cresselia if it sets up, or a special Tropius as well. Uh, we are rocking Sturdy just in case I have to take a hit from the Roaring Moon and KO it back with Draco Meteor. But since I have rain support this week, I have Electro Shot, Dark Pulse, and Flash Cannon as well. Our Caledon has enough speed for, um, or rather it has enough spadef, excuse me, to ensure a very good opportunity to lift two Earth Powers from Venusaur. And then the rest I put into Special Attack and uh, Speed, just to make sure I can outspeed the Golden Go once again. Our rain setter this week will be Reggie Alecki with Volt Switch, Rain Dance, Thunder, and Rapid Spin. I was really excited about this set because I do not foresee Rhydon coming to this match. As much as we respect and appreciate a team drafting the Pokemon that is on the very logo, I did not think we would see our Caledon here, so we'll have to see if that ends up coming to pass. Uh, but the Volt Switch support is really nice here just because of the speed tier. I had no speed on Reggie Alecki to outspeed Modest Venusaur and Sun, and then the rest is just there for bulk. Uh, you wouldn't think that Reggie Alecki can take hits, but kind of like Speed Deoxys, in a pinch, it can take a few extra hits there. And the final member of this week's team is our Annihilate. It has enough speed for a max speed Goldango, and then I adjusted the HP and defense EVs to not only be able to make sure I take a single hit from his physical attackers in general, but here, if uh, the Roaring Moon is trying to go for a booster energy, so a non-item boosted acrobatic. So acrobatics, of course, doubles its attack power if there's no item. And so if he tries, if he thinks he can just hit me with that, of course, I'll be able to take that and hit him back with the close combat. But close combat, Encore, Ragefish, and Screech are our moves. I don't anticipate Golden Go wanting to come in on Annihilate. And so Screech will be there just in case Torkoal wants to swap in, uh, possibly something like an Azumarill trying to swap into a physical move. I can hit it with a Screech and then hit it right up with a Rage Fist right afterwards. So that is the horrible horde of the week. We kind of sped speed ran this team builder, but that is okay. We have to go in a little bit more quickly sometimes just because the types of opponents that we're facing. So thank you all for watching the team builder. And let's get into the battle. I may have forgotten to hit record, but I did not forget to prep for the battle. The Iron Boffin has brought Roaring Moon, Galvantula, Azumarill, Rhydon, Vaporeon, and Torkoal. If you had seen my prep at this time, I had to delete all but two Pokemon from... I, I expected the Roaring Moon and the Torkoal. <laughs> All the other Pokemon that he brought, I honestly did not foresee coming. A lot of these battles are won on Team Preview, and the fact that so many of those Pokemon were unexpected really put me off at the beginning of this battle. That does not change our game plan though, we're going to lead Darkrai and immediately click Hypnosis. Now plays like this, yes Hypnosis has 60% accuracy, but if you're going to do this, Sometimes you just have to be willing to click that move. Uh, we saw this with Addison's Darkrai. I think Amel did the same thing with his Darkrai. And now the Victorian Shadows are joining the gambit of just lead hypnosis, having some bad dreams just from the start. Can you just, can you hear the voices? Just yes, lullaby and good night. Go to sleep, little Spidey. So wonderful. Then he has bad dreams and it's just like a gigantic fly swatter or something. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna go straight for the calm mind here. On the off chance that he wakes up, I do want to be able to uh, take any hits there. Um, 
if he woke up, I actually anticipated that he would go for webs. I went for Calm Mind here because I anticipated that he would swap to Vaporeon and I wanted to force it back out immediately. So Darkrai's Focus Sash is very important here and I wanna make sure that I retain the Focus Sash for this entirety of the match. That means that I have to keep entry hazards off my side of the field so his Torkoal can set up Stealth Rocks, the Rhydon can set up Stealth Rocks, and the Galvantula can set up Sticky Web. So I wanted to keep all those things off my side of the field and that's why I also had the Articuno with Heavy Duty Boots just in case. Vaporeon does end up swapping in and we can see from this plus one Dark Pulse even after the leftovers, that's gonna be a three hit KO. I figured that he was very incentivized to go for either Haze or Wish and then Protect. So I make a call here and I decide to stay in and risk my Focus Sash on a Scald or a Flip Turn or something like that, knowing that he probably doesn't want to just let my Dark Cry run around. So we get another Dark Pulse off and he does go for Haze. So that resets my stats back to neutral, but my Focus Sash is still intact and I ran several calcs, and from this range of HP, he should easily be in range of a Dark Pulse without any boost on it. He would have to have a ton of special defense, and if he had that, he would not have, take, he would not have taken the other two Dark Pulses so poorly. So thinking that I could KO him, I stay in and I go for another Dark Pulse, but somehow he lives the Dark Pulse and breaks my Focus Sash. Now I want you to bookmark this moment, please. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. Please bookmark this moment because I don't understand how he lived that move. I did. I looked at several different calcs and I, I had no reason to risk it, granted. I should have just gone out to Claude Sire. Claude Sire was a free swap in with Water Absorb and I could have immediately gotten up my Stealth Rocks or even thrown off a Toxic if I thought he was going to wish. But here we are and I've lost my Focus Sash and the Vaporeon is still alive. So I did not get out of that exchange what I really needed to get out of it. Now, because of his swap into the Azumarill, I do not want to stay in here. I can't touch him. And I also can't go for another Hypnosis because of Sleep Claws in this league. So I go out into my Claude Sire expecting play rough and he misses. It would not have done that much damage. Uh, but with this being a more especially defensive Claude Sire, it would have forced me to probably recover. I was very tempted to just click Toxic here. But more than that, I want to go ahead and get up my entry hazards. With the team he has, and really the, the Vaporeon with such low HP, if I get up my Stealth Rocks now, and I prevent the Torkoal from spinning, the Vaporeon is dead on arrival. D-O-A. That reminds me of Dead or Alive, and I have not played that game in so long, but now I wish to. I long for the streets. Uh, but yes, that was my primary reason for clicking Stealth Rocks at this time. I could have thrown off the Toxic, but I wanted to make sure that we pressure the Vaporeon in the back. Now, Toxic would have been the better play. I did not really think that he would go out into Rhydon here. I more foresaw, okay, maybe he'll go out into um, the uh, Torkoal. If I had gone for Toxic, I could have put a lot more pressure onto this Rhydon immediately. But remember, we did bring a very physically defensive Annihilate to this match. So we're gonna go out to Annihilate at this time. And if he decides to try to set up or put up his entry hazards, I can just Encore him. He surprises me by going for Rock Polish and that immediately made me go, is this a double dance set? This feels like a double dance set. And with Rhydon around, Reggie Alecki really cannot pop off in the way that I wanted to with the set that I brought. It would have been really interesting if Reggie Alecki got Weather Ball or something like that. But that's kind of like giving a Terra Blast where it's just like, oh, hey, it's immediately broken suddenly. But he does go for Swords Dance now that he's faster than me with the Rock Polish. And that is good information because since he is that fast, remember, I have enough speed for a max speed Goldango. Since he's that fast, that means he cannot be that bulky. We Encore him, which means that he is going to be locked in to using Swords Dance. And here, honestly, I should have gone for Screech. If he stayed in, he would have had at least uh, another turn to where he had to go for Swords Dance. But if he swapped out, that means I would have been able to get a stronger hit on whatever came in. Since he goes out to Torkoal, Close Combat does not do that much damage, honestly. And I was wondering if it was a little bit more physically defensive. Granted, I don't have any attack investment on this Annihilate. 
but I was very disappointed by the amount of damage that that did. It just really didn't speak of the rage that I know that my Annihilate is really capable of. Now, after some long, long musings there, you can see that I went almost down to timer. I decided to go out to our Kaludon here. I was really worried about getting burned by a lava plume. And I swap in our Kaludon and I get burned by the lava plume. So I was correct to not leave my Annihilate in there. But I also really didn't want my uh, Arcaludon burn either. Um, because I have a salt vest on it instead of leftovers, or even a citrus berry, the longevity is just not there. Now, because of how little damage my Annihilate did with the close combat, I actually thought that this Torkoal would drop to a Draco Meteor. That was my primary reason for swapping it in here. If the Torkoal were to live, that would be a problem. I also briefly considered anticipating Azumarill swapping in on the Draco Meteor, but I decided to just go straight for Draco Meteor, because if he does bring in the Azumarill, then I can at least go back out to my Claude Sire. Whereas if I go for Flash Cannon and he goes for Earth Power or something, then I've wasted the turn. But he actually takes this Draco Meteor pretty well for a Torkoal, and does crippling damage with this body press attack. So that combined with the burn and my eyes are hurting because of the sun and I'm just not having a good time. This is why you should bring black glasses to every battle. If I had those two on my Darkrai, Darkrai would have KO'd the uh, Vaporeon. So I need to equip more shades across these battles. Granted, if I have black glasses and I can't have a focus sash, but that is neither here nor there. He does go in to a zoom roll now that my Draco Meteor is weakened and I've lost so much HP and my, my special attack is lowered as well. So I figured that he actually might be going for the Belly Drum here, which will maximize his, his attack and my Arcaladon can't really touch it. And that is where I could have played. There are multiple instances, honestly, so far where I could have played a little bit better. It would have been a better play to immediately swap out from my Arcaladon into my Claude Sire on the Torkoal. If he's gonna go for Lava Plume or Earth Power, Torkoal can take those all day. Yes, I am risking the burn and cutting my Earthquake Power down, but it's better to have that damage on Claude Sire because Claude Sire can recover that HP. So I, I really do wish I had taken advantage of that opportunity in that way. Now here, thinking he might go for Belly Drum, but also predicting, mm, I wonder if he's gonna try to pick me off with maybe an Aqua Jet. Uh, or maybe just a coverage move, I could decide to go out into my Articuno. And I do call it partially right. He goes for a Trailblaze, which raises his speed. And Articuno, of course, resists that. And at such low HP and being unable to touch him, my Arcaladon really wouldn't have been able to do too much back. I thought that Freeze Dry was the great move to choose here without going for my Terra, because if I Terra it into a Fire type, now his Water type moves are going to do more damage. So. Freeze Dry is my move of choice. I figured I could easily two hit KO him from this range and I could roost off any damage that he wanted to apply to my Articuno. Play Rough does a crap ton of damage and Freeze Dry, although it looks like a two hit KO, it honestly did not do as much damage as I thought it was going to. I really lament not bringing Expert Belt Articuno to this matchup because that would have secured, guaranteed the two hit KO but here, since he is absolutely faster than me, I have to swap out anyway. And I was really, really unfortunately having to swap things into this Azumarill. Now, in my prep, I honestly did not expect Azumarill. I didn't have any problems kind of handling it when I was doing vision training here. But here it's become a major problem. And I decide to go ahead and sacrifice my Arcaludon here because I don't see any bridge to opportunity for Arcaladon when it has such low HP and it is burned. So Arcaladon, your sacrifice is not going to be for nothing. We will do our best to take down some more of his Pokemon, but here I do need a free swap into another Pokemon. Now, if he didn't have the Rhydon, this would be a great opportunity for Regieleki to hit the field. Uh, and of course we saw there that he went for the water type move. I could have swapped in Claude Sire for free. Alas, that is not how any of that panned out. And I am just continually finding myself on the back foot in this battle. And I don't know if that's because of being infected by the Frenergy or what it is, but it it 
causes a lot more reactive playing. Whereas when I was playing against Mephesto, I was just trying to execute my own game plan. So now I go into the Claude Sire, and then he decides to swap out to his Vaporeon, and because of the Stealth Rocks, Vaporeon goes down. Which is good that we get the KO, but that gives him a free swap into one of his Pokemon. And unfortunately, that means that we're going to have to either stare down the Rhydon, trying to set up again, or the Roaring Moon, trying to set up. Because he had not brought in his Roaring Moon up to this point, I actually thought it was Scarfed in the back. And so a lot of the plays that I was making were in light of the sunny day. No, in light of thinking that Roaring Moon was Scarfed in the back, especially since my Focus Ash was broken. I wanted to make sure that I had something to take a hit from the Roaring Moon. So, Rhydon comes back in, and knowing that he's probably going to go for Rock Polish again because he wants to outspeed whatever I go to, I am trying to decide what do I want to do here. I do decide to go back to Annihilate. With Citrus Berry, I knew I could take a hit if he decided to go for, say, like Swords Dance. It would bring me down to very low HP, but it would not quite KO me. So I was prepared for Annihilate to have to take some pressure in this situation. But if he decided to set up again, I could at least encore him into the Earthquake, get my Articuno a free swap in maybe, and then roost off some HP. Um, or I could just go for close combats to really soften up this Rhydon, because I really need to get the Rhydon off the field because I'm basically playing at a deficit of Pokemon because I can't bring in Regieleki while Rhydon is around. Now I asked the Iron Boffin, why? Why would you bring your Rhydon to this matchup? Because I had my Primarina, I have my Annihilate. I, I, I just didn't foresee it coming. And he was like, it was just there for the Regieleki. And gosh, golly, gosh, darn it. It did its job very well here, very effectively. And I apologize for the language that I just used, but I feel very strongly about what is happening on this battlefield. Now, because we did uh, bring in Annihilate here, we are going to Encore him in just to stop him from setting up. And now the Encore has been revealed. I do wonder if Taunt may not have been better in that slot, but because he had access to Cresselia, I did want to take advantage of locking him into setup moves instead of just blocking him out of them completely because then you're stuck on the field using it over and over. But since he is going to be forced to go for Earthquake, I am going to take this opportunity to go right out into my Articuno. A better play, once again, would have been going for the Screech. I brought the tech, but I didn't utilize the tech. Screech would have put this right on a negative two defenses. Great for a close combat. And then anything coming in, like this Azumarill, at minus two defense would have dropped to a Rage Fist. He expertly calls my swap out. I don't know if he predicted me to swap into Articuno specifically, but this time he doesn't have plus one speed. And so I figured I could outspeed and KO him, thinking that he had Play Rough, Liquidation, Trailblaze, and Belly Drum. But if he had Aqua Jet, then I also had a chance to live that from this range of HP. Unfortunately, I did not actually take that chance here. He's able to take out my Articuno. I was very, very sad there because you all saw me earlier. I was on the mountaintop catching this Articuno in a blizzard and I just let it get KO'd. It didn't even get to Terastalize. Ah, uh, alas, 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 alas. So once again, I go into Claude Sire too little, too late. This is three times now in one battle where I go into the Claude Sire the turn after I should have had it on the field. Yes, Claude Sire has very low base speed but it coming out is not based on its base speed. All I had to do was swap it in. Like, we had the give the ball to me coach moment with Reggie Alecki last week. I did not give the ball to Claude Sire properly. I left him on the bench too much during the battle. And now he's here, which means we can go straight for an Earthquake or a Toxic. Toxic if we predict the ride on to come back in. Earthquake if we're trying to pick off this Azumarill. We're gonna go for Toxic, of course because Rhydon switches in on Claude Sire all day, every day. We can see how little damage that play rough does, and I am able to hit him with the Toxic, and I was like, all right, at least I'm going to be able to slowly whittle away at this Azumarill. 
I really wanted to catch the Rhydon or the Roaring Moon with a Toxic though, because I did have the tools to help stall them out of their moves just a little bit here in the end game. Um, I do decide to go for Earthquake here, thinking that I would be able to finish off this Azumarill. Now the better play, now that I'm looking at it in hindsight, would have been to go for Recover. Recover, of course, gives me back up to full HP, and that means that I can take almost any hit from his more physically oriented mons. Rhydon still had a really good chance to KO me if he was like max attack invested, which he might have been because he had so much speed. But uh, Roaring Moon could not have necessarily unless it were like a boosting item or the booster energy. And then I could have at least applied Toxic to another Pokemon on that team. So that is where I would have adjusted those moves here with Claude Sire. But that's okay, we're here now. We're gonna go for the Earthquake to finish off this is Zoomerill, but he gets the attack drop on the play rough, and I do not quite finish him off with the earthquake. Ugh. But it is a good thing that I toxic him because he does go down to the poison damage. So Zoomerill is finally off the field. At this point, he has his Roaring Moon, the Galvantula that's asleep, and his Rhydon remaining alongside the Torkoal with about. Um, with very little HP. Whereas I have my Darkrai with the Focus Sash broken, my Regieleki, which has not entered the battlefield, my Claude Sire with about half of his HP here, and um, really, really just a nightmare. I have all those things in a nightmare. Galvantula has sat this entire battle just having bad dreams in the background, and Claude Sire has just been on the field the whole battle having bad dreams because I keep throwing him into attacks. So, more water attacks would have equaled a little bit of a better situation. Now here is where, remember I told you all to bookmark that uh, item earlier? This is a Protosynthesis boosting for attack booster energy on his Roaring Moon. And if I had recovered, it still would not have helped. Um, I do decide to go just for a little bit of... Um, you know, just a little bit of toxic chip damage here. But because he goes for Dragon Dance and he has the booster energy boosting his attack, unfortunately, I don't have anything else that I can do in this battle. Um, he's going to outspeed my Reggie Alecki with that speed. And um, Annihilate can't take a hit at this low of HP. And I've lost the Focus Sash on my Darkrai. If I had retained that Focus Sash earlier, yes, I might have lost another Pokemon here. But I could have brought in the Darkrai and at least gotten off a hit. Um, and that extra hit combined with the toxic damage should have been enough to, to KO the Roaring Moon, or at least put it in range to die to the next round of toxic. But alas, these are the the, the parts of the, the barbs that Mounte gave me in week one there. So the Victorian Shadows are going to lose here, but I really learned a lot from this battle. Number one, I learned that when I cast off for energy, I am going to be weaker that week. Uh, like I've had this shoulder issue for a little bit now, and it's it's been a whole it's been a thing, you know. But now that we've gotten rid of that for energy, we will be able to bounce back even darker, even more powerful in the next week. Now. Many props to my opponent, the Iron Boffin. I really enjoyed this match, and I really enjoyed getting to know you here on the field of battle. But if we see you again on this battlefield, know that we will be bringing the pain, and it won't be my own pain from Frenergy. It'll be your pain when we fight you again. So as this battle kind of goes to a close here, as we get swept by Roaring Moon, I just want to say that I appreciate you all for being here for the Victorian Shadows and look forward to our matchup next week when we go for our rematch against Seabad and the Detroit Steel Wings. Um, we fought Seabad last season when we had our Sun Team and we really were taken off guard by a blunder policy, our Saluna Blood Moon. So we will be absolutely hoping to pay him back, maybe even pass on that sticky barb to him 
since I didn't get a chance to give it to the Iron Boffin. But either way, I need to get it out of my uh, posterior. Please, my butt. Tell me what is going on. <laughs> a foul curse has been unleashed upon our town by my butt. You mean the gates of doom were opened by my butt. The fabric of the universe was ripped apart by my butt. My butt has made quite a mess. <laughs> and get moving. Thank you all so much. Have a good night. <laughs>